Security. So in this video, we're just going to talk about the security around our service requests. So we're looking so far at this creating a kind of service request that allows us to create a new Active Directory user and how we're going to publish this through the portal. And we've been going through all the different uh, steps to make this happen. But what's most important, of course, is making sure only the right people can request this service request. Now, we could put some security into Orchestrator so that when the service request is created, we can uh, make sure uh, by looking at the affected user relationship, we can see who that who has recreated it, and then we can check to see if they're in the right group, and then no longer carry out that Orchestrator workflow if they're not in the right group. Because we don't really want to display things in the portal to people that they shouldn't be doing or using. Because as we create more and more service requests, it's going to get a bit cluttered. It's quite simple to add the security. Um, and so we're just going to quickly go through that now. Uh, for anyone who's been following along the videos, you're going to notice that the portal has suddenly changed. And that's because up until now, I've been using the brand new portal as of uh, December 2015 that Microsoft released. Unfortunately, it's so full of bugs uh, that it's been hard for me to do a lot of the videos. And as such, um, I've had to revert back to the old portal while we wait for Microsoft to, to fix it. And it's a, it's a shabby state in which Microsoft can't release something that's got uh, at least five major bugs in it. Okay, so we come back to the lovely old uh, portal here and we come to do our service request. We see that we have no service requests available apart from the original or the, the built-in creating an incident request here standard generic instant request. So we're logged on here as our HR user and in Active Directory we have added, a, we've created a group called HR and we've added our HR user to that group. So what we want to do is make available the create new AD user service request to our HR user. So what we do is we come over to service manager and under the library we have groups and we can create two types of groups. We can create a, a standard group as of users or we can create a catalog group. And this is a group of uh, service requests or service offerings, request offerings. Um, and then what we can do is we're gonna tie that to our uh, Active Directory user. So let's create a, a group. Okay, I'm gonna call this service requests for HR. Now we just should take a moment to think about our design here. There's always more than one way to do things. Um, and what we could do is we could create, create these groups avail um, based on the people that are gonna have access to them. So we could create a group for HR where we'll put all the service offerings that are available to HR in it. Or we could, another way is create a catalog of all the similar kind of um, service requests. So anything that's used to setting up a new user or something that's about changing permissions and then taking that and applying it to a group. So a couple of different ways of doing it. So include members, you naturally think this is gonna be our users, but actually it's not. It's the request offerings that we need to add here. And so we're gonna add our catalog item, which is AD task, request offerings, and we should have create AD user. So we're gonna uh, add both the service offering which is the category we spoke about that earlier and the actual request offering to the group called hr and subgroups this allows us to um, add another category a uh, catalog group in with here so basically it's like nesting groups so what we've done here is we made a group of all the service offerings uh, under a particular category. But what we need to do now is make that available to our HR department. So under administration and user roles, we're gonna create the new roles uh, end user role. Now we can't add to this end user role because it uh, can't be overridden. Well, we can add users to it, but we can't add any uh, catalog options to it. So we're gonna create a new user role. And we're going to say uh, end user role for HR. Now what we need to do here is go through it and give access to the management packs that contain the, uh, the definitions for our service request. For the moment, I'm just going to click select all. We should really be, be a little bit more thorough on this. Queues are going to have completely no relevance whatsoever. 
configuration item groups are going to have no relevance whatsoever to the end portal. And our catalog groups is where we will now select the catalog group service request for HR that we created a few moments ago. We need to make sure that uh, all forms have access. And this is where we add our users. And we're going to add our HR department. And we're going to create. So basically, we've created our end user role where we've put our HR group in and we linked it through to our service catalog group, which has our individual offerings available. If we come over to our portal. We see now the AD tasks become available and we can see the create new AD user is now available. We now have access to that service offering. So going forward, we need to start to think how we're going to map this out. Are we going to create a number of end user roles for based on the kind of offerings that we're doing? So like managerial roles or we're going to create departmental roles. So I hope this very short video has been useful for you. Thank you.